In this quick start tutorial, we'll be reviewing basic editing functions. This is the edit window. Audio and MIDI tracks can be edited into regions or repeated in different locations to fix mistakes or timing, create loops, rearrange sections or entire songs. You can also assemble tracks using material from multiple takes, etc. You're going to spend most of your time in this window. My edit window looks pretty crowded. Let's begin by hiding some of these rulers using the Ruler View Selector. An alternative would be to Alt-click on the rulers you don't want to see. Let's leave up the time-based rulers, bars and beats, minutes and seconds, and samples. I'm trying to get rid of samples, but as you see, I can't because it happens to be my active ruler. Let's make another ruler active. Now we're able to get rid of samples. Let's bring back bars and beats. OK, upper left corner, we see our edit modes. Next to the edit modes are zoom tools. Here are some more edit tools. Here's our counter display. And here is a repeat of the transport panel controls. This is in case you'd rather not keep the transport window open. OK, on the left we have our tracks list. All active tracks will be highlighted. Down below is my list of groups. I actually don't have any, so none are listed here. Click on this chevron here to hide the tracks and groups list. On the right hand side is my regions list. Here I see all of the musical events I've created, either during recording, punching in and out, importing tracks, etc. The source audio files are shown in bold. Let's hide this as well by clicking on the double chevron in the corner. This gives us a little more room. OK, let's talk about edit modes. Pro Tools has four edit modes, shuffle, spot, grid, and slip. Each has its own color. The edit modes influence how the edit tools work, so it's important to understand the principles of how they work. Let's talk about slip mode. In slip mode, you can adjust regions freely without any guide or restraint from Pro Tools. For example, select the grabber tool. Let's drag our trumpet region forward. I can drop it exactly where I want rather than lining it up against a grid, etc. Now let's take a look at shuffle mode. In shuffle mode, my regions snap together like magnets. When I drag this region, it drops in place at the beginning or end of the adjacent region. There won't be any gaps between the regions, and everything shuffles over to the right or left. Now let's take a look at grid mode. In this mode, your adjustments are guided by time-based increments that you define. If I try to drag this region, it'll automatically snap to the grid line. Unlike in shuffle mode, I can overlap regions, but I can only line them up along a grid line. Grid mode is like the snap to grid function in graphics programs. Now let's look at spot mode. In spot mode, you can enter a precise numerical location for a region. When you click on a region, the spot dialog window opens. You can select the time scale that you'd like to use for your placement, then locate your region by start or end, and click OK. If you want to toggle between the modes just by pressing your keyboard, use the tilde key. To the right of the edit modes are your zoom tools and edit tools. Let's take a minute to talk about some of these. Here we have the zoomer, the trimmer, the selector, the grabber, the scrubber, and the pencil tool. Down underneath these tools is the smart bar. This activates what's called the smart tool. Click on a tool to select it, and when it's active, it's blue. You can also toggle through the tools using the escape key. The zoomer, the trimmer, the grabber, and the pencil have drop-down menus offering you multiple modes. We'll learn about this later in this course. OK. Click on the Zoom tool to activate it. Now click anywhere on a track to zoom in. If you want to zoom out, click Command Zoom on your Mac or Alt Zoom in Windows. You can use the Trimmer tool to shorten the beginning or end of a region. Let's say that there's a silence you want to get rid of. You would select the slip mode and then the trimmer tool. A square bracket open to the right appears if my cursor moves near the beginning of a track and it opens to the left if I'm near the end of a track. Click inside the region and then drag it left or right as you need to. You can also use the trim tool to extend a region, but you can't extend it past the length of the original source audio file. Let's click on the Track Height Selector to change the height. 
If you'd like to change the height of all your tracks at once, click Command and the Track Selector in your Macintosh or Alt and the Track Height Selector in Windows. Let's take a look at a problem I'm having with this percussion track. I have some rhythm here that doesn't quite line up with the beat. I'd like to line it up a little more precisely. I click anywhere on a ruler to get a playback position start point. What I'm listening for is a bit that sounds good, something that lines up. I'm going to take it and use it as a loop. Let's enable the selector tool. Cursor changes to an I beam when the selector tool is active. I'm going to highlight the section that I want to turn into a loop. Let's create a new track for this. Let's name it appropriately so I don't forget what it is later. Click OK. I've got the separation grabber enabled from the grabber mode drop down menu. And I drag my one bar selection up to the new track. Press Alt to copy it. Control Alt to drop it in the exact same place. Now let's get the time grabber back. Let's drag this back to the beginning. Because I'm in slip mode, I'm able to drag and drop wherever I like. Now let's view our time scale and bars and beats. That way we can position it right on the beat. Let's make bars and beats active. Now let's enable grid mode. This will let us position right on the beat. I'm going to drag and drop it right on the second beat. It'll snap right to the grid. Let's zoom in a little bit so we get a better look at what's going on. Seems to be lining up decently. We grab it again. Now let's repeat it. Edit. Repeat. Let's choose the number of times we'd like to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it 10 times. Click OK, and then we'll have a listen. Okay, this is obviously not working. What did we do wrong here? Let's pause our playback and go take a look. As you see here, my repetitions don't line up according to the grid. That's because my selection was a little too short. Let me undo my repeat and let me lengthen my section appropriately with the trimmer tool. I need to drag this region out so that it's the full length of the bar. Then when I repeat it, it'll line up exactly to the grid. Activate the trimmer tool. Now let's lengthen this region. I do have source audio file available for this. Now my region is exactly one bar long, so we're going to try our repeat again. Let's select the region, then select Edit, Repeat. We'll leave it at 10 and click OK. Now let's have a listen. Position our cursor. Because I'm in grid mode, I got dropped right on a grid line. I can select beats 1, 2, 3, or the bar line. I'm not able to position in between unless I change my grid value. Select from this drop down menu. And let me choose an eighth note this time. See how my grid has changed to give me more options? Now I can drag and drop, and I'm guided by this smaller grid increment. Let's position and have a listen. Okay, this sounds much better. Let's stop our playback by pressing the stop key or pressing the space bar. As you can see, we've now created a looped phrase. If I want, I can further separate this bar into individual beats. This allows me to rearrange the rhythm a little bit. I would simply select and drag to new tracks. Obviously, there are many, many more complex operations that I can perform while editing. The few things that we've gone through here are really just the tip of the iceberg. And this concludes our quick start tutorial on basic editing.